that particular outbreak. Let's move on. Now, Sarah Wairimo Kamoto, the widow of slain Dutch billionaire Tob Cohen, has formally been charged with the murder of the husband. Wairimo has denied killing the late Cohen. The court will tomorrow hear the bail application made by Wairimo's lawyer, Philip Murkor. Meanwhile, Murkor can now breathe a sigh of relief after Justice Stella Mutuku signed his resignation as a state prosecutor in March this year was enough. Murkor, therefore, will continue representing Wairimo. Our reporter Grace Courier has been following up on that case and now joins us live from the Milimani Law Courts. Grace Courier, very good afternoon to you. A lot of developments today. She's finally um, taken her plea of not guilty. Murgor has gotten the thumbs up to continue representing the accused Wairimo right there. What more can you tell us? Well, yes, indeed. A very good afternoon to you, Jesse. And as you rightly said, a lot of activities have taken place today at the Milimani Law Courts, Jesse. Um, uh, we did see both Sarah uh, Wairimo Cohen and uh, Peter Karanja arraigned before Judge Stella Mutuku. These two are co-accused. And of course, by now, we all know that the charge that they're facing is a murder charge of one Dutch tycoon, Tob Cohen, whose body was found after, you know, being murdered. Uh, on the 13th of uh, September, that is last month. So today, there were two things that were supposed to happen before Judge Stella Matuku. She was supposed to rule on whether um, uh, Defence Counsel Philip Morgor will continue representing um, uh, Sarah Wairemo, and of course uh, Sarah was also supposed to take plea, and Peter Karanja, the co-accused, was supposed to be arraigned today for the first time, his first appearance ever since he was arrested, which is as at today, 24 days ago. Now, uh, we started by just Judge Stella Matuku um, ruling that it is okay for Morgo to continue representing um, Sarah because the argument from the prosecution team led by prosecution lawyer Catherine Moneki was that he once served as a public prosecutor and hence he is not suitable to serve as a defense counsel. But we did see Morgo defend himself, say that this is not the first case where he's serving as a defense counsel. He also said that on this 7th of March this year, he did serve his, um, uh, what's the word, resignation, that's what I'm looking for. So he served his resignation as a public prosecutor, meaning um, effective 7th March of this year, he was no longer a public prosecutor. But there was time, a lot of time was taken before a public gazette notice was made to now like formally um, say that he's not a public prosecutor. But uh, we did see Judge Stella Matuku in her ruling say that the gazette that notice is just there to notify the public, but it doesn't change in any way that Morgor did resign from his position as a public prosecutor, and therefore he, she did give him a go-ahead to continue representing um, Sarah Wairimo Kohen. Now, what this meant is that, you know, the case could go on, and uh, we did see Sarah Wairimo taking plea. Um, she pleaded not guilty to the ch murder charge against her of, of course, murdering her husband. That is the late uh, Tob Cohen. And, uh, of course, f uh, among other things that uh, uh, Judge Stella Matuku raised was that not person should be forced to remain in office upon their resignation. And of course, as I did say, we did see the request by Catherine Moneki there rejected. So after that, we saw Sarah Wairimo Cohen take plea and uh, she pleaded not guilty. And as I also did mention, uh, Jesse, is that Peter Karanja, the co-accused, made his first appearance in court today. And of course, he was also supposed to take plea, but that did not happen because for any murder case for any murder charge one one has to go through a mental assessment and what we understand what we gather is that as at now that is yet to be done we also did see his lawyers led by um uh, council ham lagat uh, say that he's diabetic and uh the time that he's been he has been held so far at the police custody which should be 24 days um uh, his blood sugar levels went really high which is risky and so he was requesting for him to be seen by his personal doctor at Aga Khan Hospital, a request that I would say was rejected by Judge Stella Matuk, but she did order that he be detained at the industrial area um, uh, prisons and that he should be taken to Mathare Hospital on Tuesday for a mental assessment and also be taken to the Kenyatta National Hospital, you know, for these checkups for the fact that he's diabetic. I also didn't mention that Sarah Cohen has all along been detained at the Langata Maximum Prison 
reason for today. It's going to be the that, that 38th day, Jesse. Uh, of course, she'll be back here tomorrow um, uh, for the bail application, which today was vehemently opposed by the prosecution team led by Catherine Moneki. We did see her say that as at now, they are yet to place any witnesses under protection. And the question from Morgan was, what were you waiting for all this while? It's been 38 days since Sarah was arrested. So what have you been waiting for? And uh, we did see the prosecution team request for five days to file some affidavits to speak to the witness protection so that they can have the witnesses protected. But to that request, it was not honored by the judge and that's why she told them to come back tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. now for the bail application and all the affidavits by the prosecution team Jesse should be ready so that's it from the courts uh, back here tomorrow for the bail application for Sarah Cohen and of course uh, Peter Karanja should be back on Tuesday that is the 11th of October Jesse